Hello and welcome to DPN TV here at the DPN Rover Car Collection and you may remember um, a few weeks ago that we changed the steering wheel in our silver 45 uh, 1.6 to the um, cream leather. We bought that as a new steering wheel initially because the 45 we're in at the moment which is our 1.4 blue 45 um, had a worn steering wheel and I think you might just be able to see that that it is um, sort of worn away almost like it's been sanded uh, so we bought a new steering wheel our initial idea was to put the cream one in our green 45 because it has a cream interior but we found that it actually matched the interior of our silver 45 as the under dash which on this is still just um, black is, is cream and match that steering wheel so we changed it on that and this is now the steering wheel out of um, that 45 there's a little bit of wear on this one but it's um, still a lot better than that one and uh, is um, kind of that sort of leather stitch steering wheel rather than the um, plastic finish that's in this one so it's certainly um, going to be a, a nicer steering wheel to drive with uh, as we've already changed the steering wheel what I thought I'd do in this one is not only show the steering wheel being changed but also talk a little bit more about the what some people call the clock spring I think but it's the device that allows the signals and wiring from the horns as you can see on this steering wheel and the volume up and down and station up and down to travel through the steering wheel um, down to the rest of the loom obviously while you're turning the steering wheel quite a clever device and not quite how we thought it would work but I thought I'd show you um, how to change that because we did actually have to change that on one of our cars because it did go wrong so it's uh, a useful thing to do but there's the steering wheel we're going to be putting on and um, the first thing to do is to disconnect the battery uh, and wait about 20 minutes half hour to be really sure and that's because you've got to move the centre airbag out of the steering wheel um, you do that by um, simply undoing these two torque screws that's one on this side and there's one on the other side uh, and that allows you to remove that to get you access to the um, centre um, nut to remove the steering wheel so that's what we're going to do um, next so once you've removed the two torque screws from behind the steering wheel to release the centre airbag it should be a case of just pulling it out like this um, and of course you've got the airbag connection plug and that has if we just turn it around there um, a little clever locking device that's so I assume it could never fall out or come loose um, so all you need to do is simply get hold of it and pull it out like that that then releases the plug which then should allow you to gently wiggle it out yeah and after a little bit of wiggling it should just pull out and remember if you're forcing it too much perhaps something's not quite right and as you can see in there they're very little pins and can be easily bent and snapped you may need a little flat screwdriver to just help you wiggle it out but again do be careful that you don't break that um, plug that then allows you to remove your airbag out the way um, and as the power's disconnected it should be um, safe to, to do so and I did see someone else suggest that you always like that way up in case if the airbag did go off it would just inflate and not fly the piece up in the car or wherever you've got it stored but as I say with the battery disconnected for about half hour before you start it should be right and once it's disconnected there should be nothing to cause that um, airbag to fire in normal circumstances um, that then leaves you the center um, so of course you can remove the um, nut right there which we'll be doing and also remove the horn and steering wheel wiring controls but this can remain because this is part of the clock spring the device allows the wires to transfer to the loom uh, 
but lets you move the steering wheel and we'll be showing that once we've got the wheel right off. Uh, something useful to know, normally on all cars, anything to do with airbag wiring is yellow. So if you ever come across that um, and it's plugged into the seats or perhaps um, a door panel airbag, the steering wheel or even the um, passenger airbag over there and it's yellow wiring like that, then uh, that's what it is. And as I say, normally they have some sort of safety connection. Like as I showed you, you pull this little tab up and then gently pull it out and that makes sure it can never... Um, come out uh, unless you definitely want it out. Right, so what we recommend next is if you are changing the steering wheel, just make sure that this airbag module um, does fit in the new steering wheel. Of course, it should do because it's um, the same steering wheel, but it's always worth checking. Um, we've now removed the wiring that carries the horn and the radio controls out of the plug just from there. Um, loosened the nut in the middle of the steering wheel there and what we always do is just once we've got it off screw it back on a few threads and make sure you pull the wheel like that in case it does suddenly jump off um, that stops that from happening um, and then completely remove it and what I've done, I um, hope you can see, is put a little um, marker pen mark on the steering wheel right in the um, centre there and a little dot on the um, threads of the bolt. And if you notice on this steering wheel, there's like a little um, mark in the steering wheel that I've then put marker pen on uh, and of course keep the wheel straight and it should um, all line up obviously if it doesn't what you'd have to do is um, take it back off and remove it a few splines around but normally um, that does work so once the steering wheel's off it of course reveals the device that allows you to turn the steering wheel but your airbag and radio controls and horn still link up to the loom. Uh, it's quite a clever little device as there's a ribbon cable in here that basically unwinds and winds back up as you turn the wheel and as you can see that would turn with the steering wheel. Um, now if you're just putting the steering wheel back as long as you remember the place that's in then that's all you need to do is keep it like that. If you're changing the clock spring because you found that perhaps there's an airbag warning light on or some of the steering wheel controls don't work and you've ruled out everything else, then that's certainly a reason to be changing it. Then from memory, all you need to do is remove this cowling and there are three screws underneath and then it's a case of removing it by unclipping it apart here on this join line and removing them off and then the actual clock spring the device here is held on by these screws there and there's three of them I think one there and um, one just there then you take it off um, if you're getting a new one it'll probably be locked in the right position and you take that lock off once you've well, once you're about to fit the steering wheel, if you've got a um, replacement part or a second hand part, then you need to make sure it is in the right position because if it's wound round like this all the way to one end, then when you put the steering wheel on and try and turn to the um, right, obviously it's not going to be able to because the little ribbon cable will be run out. So it's likely to break that device or even stop you um, steering off it's more likely to break this device by ripping the ribbon cable out inside so the way you make sure that you're in the right position is I think it's around about two and a half turns each way so if you turn it all the way to one way as far as it'll go and turn it back two and a half turns that should be in the middle but the best way to make sure is if you see this little white dot here as I turn this round that now disappears which means it's um, not in the central position the ribbon cable has started to be um, unwound so the easiest way is to turn it 
till you see this white dot and then get it into the position where the steering wheel lines up with this socket and that will make sure that that clock spring device is um, in the right place. Quite a clever little device and not quite how we imagined it would work. We never envisaged there'd be a little ribbon cable that unwinds and winds back up when you think how many times you turn the steering wheel and that lasts and survives and on our 45s we've only ever had to change one so we assume it's a fairly reliable device. So once you've fitted it all back on it's looking like this it's uh, a case of putting the steering wheel back on but as I say um, you're removing the cowling, removing this is not um, too bad, that's fairly simple, but the important thing is to get it into the right position so that you don't damage your new um, clock spring device that allows all your wiring from the steering wheel to go into the loom and let the steering wheel remove. So I thought it was certainly worth covering that. So the steering wheel is back on. Uh, the nut is back on as well and set to the correct torque setting. We get that from the Haynes manual. You can also get that from the X part CD disc which we have that you put in your computer. Um, I've lined the steering wheel up with the little marker pen dot which has disappeared now under the nut um, and the little dot on the spline. It also looks um, in the same position there. If you were to get it wrong, it would be a case of remembering how slightly it out was, taking the airbag uh, module back out, undoing the nut, and then turn it round slightly on the splines to get it back lined up. But normally, uh, marking it and checking it looks lined up normally works for us. Uh, of course, we've got to plug this back into the um, little module there that translates our wiring through the moving steering wheel and into the loom. Uh, of course we've also got to put the airbag module back which I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, it's always worth making sure that all these controls and the horns work. Now we know that because it's come out of a car that we already had in use. So the next bit that's fiddly of course is putting the airbag module back on. This is the back side as you can see it's the two little pins. To the top is uh, a little slot and that's how you'll line up the um, little wire plug that goes into it. And probably one of the more fiddlier bits to um, get done as the little yellow wire never seems to be quite long enough. So once you put it in with those slots, push it down and you'll hear that little click. Uh, and then the locking device, you then push down like that, push it down and you hear the click and that is now locked in. From there, you should then be able to turn this round, just check that there's no... Um, obviously trapped wires and everything looks back in okay and uh, it's a case of just gently pushing that back in um, putting the two little um, torque screws back in as we said one this side here and if I can get the one down here um, once they are both done uh, then all you need to do then is connect the battery back up and that job is done. Hopefully that's helped you in how to remove the steering wheel but also how to change the clock spring, that device that lets the wiring from the moving steering wheel go through into the um, loom and give you a, a basic idea on how to do that. As we always say, um, it's always worth having the manuals with you for all the talk settings and um, specific procedures and also well worth watching any other videos that are about uh, on doing this job to really build the picture up for you. As always, don't forget to visit our Instagram page at the DPN Car Collection. Of course, subscribe to this channel for more videos and our Twitter page at DPN Rover Cars.